Q4OS Linux just had a new release, Q4OS Linux 3.7. Today we're going to take a look at their Trinity Desktop Edition based on Debian testing. Let's get started. So what exactly is Q4OS? Those of you that uh, are not aware, Q4OS, reading a little bit from the DistroWatch page for Q4OS, it is a Debian-based Linux distribution based out of Germany featuring the Trinity desktop environment. The Trinity desktop environment, by the way, is a fork of the old KDE 3.5 desktop environment from many years past. I mean, KDE 3.5, I mean, dating that thing is... Uh, that's from like 12, 13 years ago, and KDE moved from 3.5 to KDE 4, and it was a big change, and a lot of people really loved KDE, KDE 3.5, so some folks forked it, created the Trinity desktop environment, and that Trinity desktop environment has seen development for the last dozen years or so, and a lot of people have stayed on what is essentially this fork of the old KDE 3.5 desktop environment. Q4OS is kind of famous for shipping with Trinity by default, but now they offer two different desktop editions. They offer, of course, Trinity, but now they offer a more modern KDE Plasma desktop edition as well. Today, I'm going to take a look at the recently released Q4OS 3.7, released about a week ago, uh, based on Debian's testing branch. So I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine. I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. So I've created a, the VM here and I've booted into the live environment and you get this nice little welcome screen when you boot into the live environment. Um, of course, we could play around in the live environment, but I want to run through the installation. So I'm going to close all of this and see if I can find the installer for Q4OS. Here's the icon right on the desktop. So that makes it very easy. All right, and the installer comes up. It looks like they're using the Calamari's installer. It says there is not enough drive space. At least five gigabytes is required. I created a 15 gig VM. All right, let me get out of this and see what the problem with this VM is. Okay, so that's really weird. I went back and take, took a look at the settings for this VM. And yes, I did create a 15 gig virtual machine. So it should be plenty of space. When I came back to the VM and ran the installer again, it doesn't complain. It doesn't give me an error message. But I didn't do anything, so I don't know. Well, it's a little bit of a glitch here inside the virtual machine, but uh, I have plenty of space, so the installer should work. All right, the first thing it's asking is about English being our language. That is correct. Uh, it correctly chose the central time zone in the U.S. for me, so I just need to click Continue. English U.S. is the keyboard layout I want. Click Next. All right, do we want to erase the disk and let PC, or um, not PC, Linux OS, uh, Q4 OS, uh, have the entire hard drive here in the virtual machine, or do we want to partition the drive? Uh, I'm just going to do the erase disk option and let Q4 OS have the entire virtual hard drive here. It is going to create a 8 point gig swap, though. Wow. Uh, you know what? Let's do the manual partitioning, because I do not want an 8.5 gig swap. Let's do the new partition table. We'll make an MBR. All right, free space. We've got 15 gigs. All right, so let's create an extend for partition file system on partition type should be primary. We need the mount point. Uh, we'll make it mount point root, of course. And let's make it bootable. Let's just do one partition for sake of time. Plus, this is a VM. There's really no reason to create a swap partition in a VM. On physical hardware, I might create a swap, although on my physical machine, what I'm currently running now, I've got 32 gigs of RAM. I pro probably wouldn't even need a swap on this machine. Anyway, let's just go with that. Now we need to create our username and password. I'm going to create my username, DT, and then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user for privacy reasons. So I'll create my strong and complicated password. Log in automatically without asking for the password. I'm going to leave that ticked off. I want to be required for a password to log into my computer, again, for privacy reasons. All right, and the installer is giving us a little summary. Locations, good. Keyboards, good. Partition scheme looks good. I'm just going to click Install. And the installer probably will run for about 5 to 10 minutes, is uh, typical on, on these installs on my equipment. So... I'll pause the video. I'll be back once the installation is complete.
All right, the installation has completed. I will say that install time was two minutes. <laughs> two minutes on my machine. Again, my machine, uh, my main machine, the host machine, is a, a thread ripper, uh, one of the 12 core, 24 thread thread rippers. Uh, I have 32 gigs of RAM. I gave the VM two cores of my 12 core CPU. I gave it four gigs of RAM, so I gave the VM plenty to work with, but Two minutes install time is just crazy fast, right, for any Linux distribution. So very impressed with how easy the install is and how quick the install took. So in the Calamari's installer, you need to make sure that this is ticked, the box next to restart now, then click done, and it will reboot your newly installed Q4OS 3.7. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, I've rebooted the machine. And we get to our login manager here for the Trinity desktop environment. It is asking for our username and password. So let me type in my username and let me give it my super secure password. And then I'm going to log in. And the Trinity desktop environment, which again is the old KDE 3.5 desktop environment, should load up for us. That's asking about DPI resolution. It says the current screen resolution is 96 DPI. Do I want to do that amount or a different amount? Uh, 96 is fine for this VM, so I'm just going to type 96 and click OK. All right, it's going to ask about our default desktop environment. I like Trinity. So I will go with Trinity. All right, and then it's asking about a software profile. Do we want the full featured desktop with web browser, office suite, recommended applications? Do we want the basic Q4OS with common utilities, system tools, or do we want to keep the Q4OS operating system or keep installed Q4OS operating system? You will be free to set up anything by yourself. So that's probably like ultra minimal, not really anything other than the, des the desktop environment. I imagine most people that run through an install of any operating system probably want your typical full suite of applications such as your browser and office suite and all of that. So I'm going to run through the full uh, install because I want to see exactly what it, they install, right? Uh, the really minimal install really won't tell us much. So I'm going to let it go ahead and install all the software. I'll pause the video. I'll be back in just a second. All right, and the installer has finished, so it installed the full desktop with all the, the desktop applications. Now I will say the initial Calamari's installer took exactly two minutes <laughs> to run through is because it didn't really install a full suite of programs. This installer is more of a net installer, so it's pulling things down from the repositories and installing them. This took a little longer. This took about 12 or 13 minutes to install the full desktop with all the applications, your web browser, your email client, the LibreOffice suite, and all that. I think it also updated the system. I saw it pulled down a new kernel and some other stuff. So this does take a little longer, but again, it's a net install. So it's going to vary depending on how fast your internet speeds are as well. So I'm going to click Finish. Congratulations, setup has finished. Click OK, and we may need to reboot. Um, it's, of course, it's going to just launch us directly into the desktop environment, but you know what? I'm going to reboot just to be on the safe side since the, it did install a new kernel. So I rebooted the machine. We get to our login manager. I will notice that the VirtualBox guest editions are working fine. We have a full uh, 1920 by 1080 display resolution here, so that's one of the benefits of going ahead and rebooting after doing that. Uh, if you're doing this in a VM, now you get a proper screen resolution. All right, and we get the welcome screen again. So in the welcome screen, we have six tabs here in the screen. We have run desktop profiler. We have turn on desktop effects. That would be interesting. Uh, let me click that. Do we, do we want to turn desktop effects on? This is not something I would normally do. I probably, it's probably going to add like some neat transparency and things like that, you know, make the desktop look a little fancier. Uh, me personally, I don't typically turn that stuff on because it really doesn't do much for me. But if you wanted to, you could turn it on. I'm just going to cancel that here in the VM. Plus, I don't want to uh, bog down the VM by turning on a lot of effects. We have install applications. If I click that, that brings up our software center. So we could install things like, I don't know, Google Chrome or Chromium or Firefox. So I'm not exactly sure what web browser it shipped with by default. We'll get into that later. But that is the software center. We could install proprietary codecs. Now, you would need to do this to be able to watch your videos and everything in VLC or whatever uh, video player it happens to ship with by default. So it is definitely important 
uh, if you're installing this on physical hardware, you need to install the proprietary multimedia codecs. You just have to have them. Uh, switch to kick off start menu, and that would change the menu down here at the bottom in uh, Trinity, the desktop environment. Set auto login. So this would enable auto login. Uh, I'm not going to turn that on. Matter of fact, I don't want to see this welcome screen anymore, so I will click, uh, tick this off, and now close the window. The next time I log into Trinity, that welcome screen will not auto-launch. You can still find it. It's still on your system. You can find it in the menu here. If I wanted to, I could probably just search for welcome, and I might could find the uh, welcome program. That's not the name of it. How about hello? This sometimes is the name of these kinds of programs. I'm um, not exactly sure. I, I, I'll find it later, though. So, first things first. What do I think of Q4OS with the Trinity desktop environment? I think Trinity, even though it is a very old <laughs> desktop environment, right? Uh, Trinity is basically KDE 3.5, which died, like, seriously, it died like 12, 13, 14 years ago. It, it died a long time ago. and uh, <laughs> But it still looks good. I think this is the reason a lot of people like Trinity, why Trinity was forked and continues to see development is because, quite frankly, it looks good. I love the look of the panel. Um, as far as the distribution, Q4S, the Q4OS, the default wallpaper they have, this little abstract art wallpaper, is simple, minimal, looks good. I like the icon set that they did by default. Let's see what applications are installed on the system. So if I go to Programs and go to Accessories, Let's see what is installed. Um, edutainment, I uh, probably not much is here. Formula editor, that's a LibreOffice math there. So let's get back out of that. If I click the arrows, we can go back. And this uh, menu system here in Trinity operates a little different than the standard uh, menu system in KDE Plasma. I don't think there's much in the way of games installed. Let's go to the graphics category. Now in graphics, we do have a few things installed. We have Digicam, which is KDE's uh, photo manager. We have the image viewer, which is Gwen view. We have the paint program, uh, color, color with a K. We have KUKA. I've never heard of KUKA. It looks like it's a scanning program. K snapshot, which is their screen capture utility. LibreOffice Draw is also here. I back out of that and go to internet. Let's see what web browser is installed by default. That is interesting. They have Google Chrome installed by default. Google Chrome is not free and open source software, of course. It is proprietary software, but apparently the Q4OS devs don't mind shipping with non-free software out of the box. Most Linux distributions would never ship non-free software on their distribution like this. Uh, usually you wouldn't be able to pull it down from the repository or anything. You have to go find that third-party software yourself. But... Google Chrome version 75.0.3770 is installed by default. Also installed, we have two email clients. We have Kmail, which is, of course, KDE's email client. But you also have Thunderbird, which I understand why Thunderbird is installed. Thunderbird is probably the email client most Linux users would want to use. Uh, but if you're going to install Thunderbird, I don't see the point of also shipping with Kmail. I don't think too many people would use Kmail anyway. All right, we have a multimedia category, and we have Amarok is our audio player. Amarok is one of the KDE applications. Uh, locate your music. There's no music on the VM here, so it's not much for me to do here in Amarok. But Amarok is a very nice uh, audio player. Amarok, there for a while, was kind of a dead project. It really didn't see much development. Uh, some people forked it and created Clementine, which is a really nice, uh, cute music player, Clementine. But then all of a sudden, Amarok started seeing development again and is being actively developed, as far as I know of now. Also under multimedia, we have the Brazero disk burning utility. That is uh, Gnome's, actually. <laughs> that's Gnome's disk burning utility. That is, that's strange. Uh, because one of the best disk burning applications out there is a program called K3B. Probably the best free and open source disk burning utility is K3B, which is a KDE application. But instead of shipping that KDE application on your basically your KDE distribution trinity, you know, one of the old versions of KDE, why are you shipping with GNOME's Brazero disk burning utility? That, that's a really odd choice. I'm not sure why they do that. Uh, I don't know. That's, I would have to ask the Q4OS devs exactly the rationale behind that. 
Uh, we have a recording tool called KREC. We have, of course, the Pulse Audio volume control. And we have VLC as our media player. And this is Pavu Control, the Pulse Audio volume control. We have our office category here. And, of course, this is where you would find the entire LibreOffice suite. Let's see. We have Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and, of course, Writer. Let's open up LibreOffice Writer. See what version of LibreOffice we are on here. Now, again, this version, Q4OS 3.7, is based on Debian testing. So I would expect this to be one of the most recent versions of LibreOffice. It is. It's version 6.1.5.2. Under the Settings category, we have this neat little utility called Look Switcher. So this is the Q4OS Look Switcher, where we could change, I guess, uh, the appearance. So if I apply this theme, this looks more like a, uh, a typical kind of plasma-like screen. Uh, Q, the Q4OS default has been set, but you need to re-log in for the sessions to change. Okay, so I have to log out and log back in to see the changes. So let's do that. If I log out of the Trinity desktop environment, and we're back to our login manager, let me log back in. And we should see the change. Yeah, and now we get this new little splash screen that was not there initially. And the panel has more of a uh, frosted glass kind of look. Uh, it looks actually very dated. <laughs> this looks much more traditional. This looks like a traditional KDE 3.5 kind of look. I actually like the other look. The other look was actually much more modern looking. I think I'm going to switch back. So I'm, I'm going to switch back to the default, uh, which was called Debonair, the Debonair theme, which looked really good. Uh, this is the theme I'm on now. I, this looks like your traditional KDE 3 series look. They also have a theme called Slide, which it looks like a Windows XP kind of theme, but with the bar on the left, kind of a Unity-like bar on the left. Uh, not sure if I would like that or not. Spring is another theme here. Uh, looks very similar to this one, actually. And then you have the Wine Classic theme, which looks like Windows 95. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the Debonair theme. I'm going to apply that and I'm going to log out and log back in. All right, I logged back in. Yeah, this looks much better, although the icons are in strange places now. It's strange that the icons got all messed up when I logged out and logged back in. Oh well. I typically don't keep icons on the desktop anyway. Uh, I would probably just delete all these if I were actually installing this on one of my machines. I'm going to right click on the desktop and choose configure desktop. And one of the things I want to see is, okay, background. Do we want to set the background for all desktops? So if I had multi monitors, you know, we could de decide how this background, this wallpaper is displayed. Let's see what wallpapers are available for us to choose from. So can I make this bigger so I can actually see what's going on? Yes. All right. So the wallpapers that are available, does it give me a preview? Uh, this is supposed to be the preview, but the preview is not working, at least in the VM. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm just going to pick one. And if I hit apply, okay, that's actually not bad. I mean, it's very simple kind of abstract art, but that actually is is pretty cool. Whoever uh, did, did this uh, actually did a really good job on the these wallpapers. I, I actually really like these simple, minimal wallpapers. They fit with a simple, kind of minimal desktop environment like Trinity. So this is actually pretty good. Uh, we have Q4OS Centaurus. So this is one of the previous versions of Q4OS. This was the wallpaper for that version. Let's see, what else did we have? Q4OS Matrix. Well, let's see what this one looks like. Apply. A very minimal theme, basically just a co simple color gradient. And Damselfly. Now, this, now that is actually a nature photograph there. So there are some photos. It's not all abstract art. Matter of fact, I think I might just go with that one. Ooh, I found an even better wallpaper. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, now, if I was running this on my desktop, you know, I mentioned icons. Can I get rid of the icons? Is there a way to do that here? So if I go back to background, if we click the behavior tab, show icons on the desktop. That's what I want to do. Turn that off, click apply, and you know what? I'm good with, with everything now. This looks gorgeous. And it's not just about looks, right? Q4OS with the Trinity desktop environment, it's not all about looks, although it looks good. Let me open up the file manager. 
that wasn't the file manager. That button there, that icon, is to show the desktop. So what that does is that toggles uh, windows on the desktop to show or not to show. So if I actually open up the file manager, Conqueror with a K in this case, if I go back and click Show Desktop, everything on the desktop disappears. If I click it again, everything that was on the desktop reappears. Now, one thing I want to do is check system resource usage. Now, there is a system monitor installed with the Trinity desktop environment, a graphical one. Uh, I don't like using the graphical desktop environments to check system resource usage because they vary between, you know, those graphical applications. I always like to use the same program to check for system resource usage. No matter what distro I'm running, I always like to do it in HTOP just to keep things on an equal level. So I'm going to open up console with a K, which is KDE's terminal application, and I'm going to sudo apt install htop. And of course we have to enter our root password to install or remove software. Uh, let's see, htop is already the newest version. So htop was already installed, so I actually did not have to run through the install. Let's see what we are using here as far as system resources. Uh, pretty much no CPU to be expected. We're not doing anything, so the CPU should be uh, under 1%, which it is. Uh, memory, RAM. I gave this VM 4 gigs of RAM. We are using 348 megs of RAM for a full desktop environment. This is not window manager only. This is not a bare bones open box install or Xmonad or Fluxbox or anything like that. This is basically a full KDE 3.5 desktop environment complete with menus and we have our SysTray, we have notifications, everything you expect from a full desktop environment with 348 megs of RAM being used. That is incredible. You will not find a full desktop environment that uses so little RAM. Um, that is the beauty of the Trinity desktop environment. It's why Q4OS is actually one of my favorite distributions. I've looked at it on the channel a couple of times in the past and it's one of those distri distributions I'm going to keep uh, reviewing on the channel because I really I want more people to know about Q4OS. I think it is a fantastic project and if I was going to run a Debian based Linux distribution on any of my machines and I was going to run a full desktop environment on any of my machines I would run Q4OS. That's how good this distribution is. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, the other Chris, Douglas, Dylan, George, Jack, Leor, Mitchell, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, Tony, and Willie. They are the producers of the show, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show about Q4OS Linux would not have been possible. The show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. Without each and every one of those guys, again, this show would not be possible. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of them, and if you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.